uh, today out of Frankfurt, uh, representing the Fraunhofer Institute. Here's Jaromir Likovic. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. My this uh, last presentation today. It was a long, long day old already. I can imagine everybody is exhausted already. My name is Jaromir Likavec. I am a networking engineer working at Fraunhofer Institute for Computer Graphics in, uh, uh, with headquarter in Darmstadt and and uh, branch offices in Rostock, Eastern Germany, Graz, Austria, and uh, Singapore. I must uh, accept I am very excited, being first time at this conference, the spirit of CWNP, the spirit of big family, uh, the feeling of being member it, this big family is great. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much to CVNW. <laughs> so, uh, short, uh, several uh, data about me. Bachelor of Science, Electrical Engineering, Computer Science at University Zagreb, Master of Computer Communication, I walked my way through CVNE, CWNE, and C CIE Wallace. My daily work, and also to get through to the CCIE Wallace, you have to, to be, to, to acquire knowledge, routing, switching, and security. So I did my way in this stuff. Network design is also very important. And also, when you are networking uh, engineer, Linux knowledge is of great importance. And I, LPIC is also vendor independent certification as uh, CWNP. And that is the great uh, to, to make certification that is vendor independent. And also, you know, this is Kali Linux, always ready to boot with all the network, networking programs, networking, uh, networking stuff that you need to troubleshoot and to test. Also, I started enough before Wireshark, Sniffer, Sniffer was the, the, start the time and did good, uh, uh, good packet analysis. Also project, uh, project management is very important in my daily, daily activities. In daily activities, I, I am networking leader, consulting engineer, project manager, and technical trainer. So with extensive knowledge in networking, and especially in wireless networking. Short about my agenda, I will not talk about wireless security. Tom Carpenter and uh, David Coleman is best, better suited for that. I'm, I was reading their books, and uh, a lot of 
user manuals from Cisco and Microsoft. And shortly, these uh, lines will repeatedly, and I will then about each uh, talk in detail. Shortly, I will talk about how I manage uh, one network from a security point with drawbacks to migrate with high security site, high security environment. So shortly, where I, what is Fraunhofer uh, society? There are 69 institute in Germany with over 24,000, 25,000 staff with high, with headquarters in Munich the institute, what is specifically for each uh, this institute, uh, ranging from uh, laser technology, biochemistry, immunology, and all, all the stuff you can imagine, imagine there, is that you are tile, uh, partly uh, financed from the publicly financed, but every institute have to be financed with uh, doing research for industry. So every institute is, had his remote, uh, remote uh, branch offices or uh, only, maybe only project centers worldwide. But come back to the uh, institute where I'm coming from. The institute characteristic is that each, uh, each side it's uh, very uh, at great collaboration between institute and the university. Uh, there is altogether 13 research and their competence center. So coming for the environment, which I had to, uh, to make highly secure. There are nine competence centers. There are cutting edge, each competence center is uh, using cutting edge technology. And each competence center is, is uh, faced with different use cases uh, how to use wireless technology. It will be not enough time to present all, and I will. Uh, present two applications from the automobile industry. Our co collaboration with uh, automobile industry is back to times uh, when we had first cave in Germany, equipped with the silicon graphics workstation, each worth more than half, and half, a, half a million dollar. The time change this is time where iPads, Microsoft HoloLens are used for the practically the same, uh, same topic as the five or 10 years in the back. So here is the uh, augmented reality. They had Odmogene reality platform, and they are using, also for this automobile industry is specific that you can make mistake only once if the con uh, competing company or the company uh, realize that data leaks happened you will lose your project, and you will never, ever get this company uh, again. If you know, high automobile industry is there, uh, there advanced in Germany. There are competing firm companies like Mercedes, BMW, Porsche, and so on. So here is one, uh, one uh, example, augmented reality guided maintenance. This application was done for Porsche and is using uh, 
sure for, for guiding maintenance. So next one, I will show with competing company uh, rendering massive CAD data on Microsoft HoloLens. The solution is scalable. The data is As a data bank, data bank in the background is using original, original data bank from BMW that is used for design of on the large display. As well, there are thousands of components that are in this for one from one uh, model of BMW and the uh, application is coming up large display as well of Microsoft Microsoft HoloLens the the same software is using for at our uh, remote branch for for doing uh, simulation and modeling in the uh, ship industry. So, what are characteristic such a research? and development environments is needed high security. We have heterogeneous mobile equipment. We have mi mixture. There is a mixture of private and corporate equipment. It's need. Everybody wants nowadays to bring his own device in the company, not only one, sometimes several. It's need for remote access. A constant need, unbelievable how, how, how often departments are coming with new use cases to solve them. And the, the last time this coming, also, there are need for new use cases in, in the wireless area. We need to network monitoring, a structure, approach to troubleshooting, always using, as a matter of fact, cutting edge technology. I will uh, refer to slide number 10 from David Coleman on Wi-Fi track 2015. He said, this is most secure authentication method, but can be difficult to deploy. I deployed it and can be Difficult to troubleshoot. I successfully troubleshoot this solution in my institute day to day. How everything started? I was asked, can you separate computer uh, from private and uh, separate corporate and private mobile devices? 
Yes, I immediately said, yes, I can. But do I need everything what is connected with that? That was a but great challenge for me. And solving different problems, I came on the end to implementation. So as a matter of fact, I will ask you how many companies solved two-factor or multi-factor authentication? Nobody? One. Huh? <laughs> OK, from the 96 Institute, I'm the only that made two-factor authentication. Also, typically, typically, LAN access is Mac-based. VLAN is, wireless LAN is user-based. In, in that time, in IGD Inter network, we used with pre-shared key. Pre-shared key, what is the security of pre-shared key? When you change pre-shared key, uh, a, a momentum afterwards, pre-shared key is uh, known to everybody almost. In internet with VPN was user-based. What is the drawback from this solution? With the increasing spread of Thunderbolt adapters and uh, dry D docking station, you can, you can register this MAC address, but this MAC address, you can, uh, the, this docking station you can use with every uh, laptop, notebook, and again, the security uh, is uh, compromised. You cannot uh, distinguish what is the corporate and what is the private. Also, LAN and wireless LAN interfaces have different MAC addresses and have to be registered separately. VPN access, computer cannot be identified on the MAC address only. MAC address is also easy to, to be spoofed. So what was the motivation to consolidate at the first place wireless LAN and VPN access, separate network access with private and corporate devices, as a matter of fact, per definition, private are always able. Now this security officer, especially in Germany, are uh, security, uh, security regulation taking to the new level. To private, private devices, nobody has a sysadmin. A sys you have no access at all. Corporate devices on the other side are good because sysadmin can do changes on, or patches or everything with this device. It was a need to develop a, develop a unified access concept for end device and deploy device user-based authentication and authorization. So you have different compute, uh, different uh, equipment, you have different access methods. You need to have one intelligent radius to do authentication, to pinpoint who the endpoint is, and otherwise to do uh, authorization what the endpoint has access to. So if you consider use case architecture overview, you have users mobile devices, and permission. Trusted user, that means employee, on trusted device has always full access. Trusted user, other non-trusted device, that means private device, had limited access. Untrusted user and trusted device, also limited access. Untrusted user, untrusted device, no access at all. You have but different situation also. You have project partners that are coming to the institute and they need access to, uh, to separate 
infrastructure for, uptile, for the department which, which they are collaborating. So you have to find uh, always specific solutions for these different cases. And when we, we consider user case security requirements, we need two-factor authentication, certificate plus username and password. We need to prevent sharing of certificate by multiple users or their multiple devices. We check user exists in Active Directory before allowing one VPN. We have, because there is collaboration with university departments and univer university employees also there, you have to found different VPN solution and use AD membership uh, will be as a criteria for our, uh, allowing different, SS, um, for example, SSL VPN. We are also checking PCs, a member of Active Directory domain. We have to severely limit net access during certificate enrollment. Verificate device certificate is a correct device. Uh, you have to do VLAN, VLAN segmentation, for example, AAA override, and you have to do L level three segmentation. On the ways when you are considering these use case security requirements, on the way to implementing system, you have to make different compromises. So, you can deploy onboarding with, uh, with the equipment that, they, that we use, but you cannot buy a license, license for this. You have to make subscription. That is the reason why we onboarding uh, solve it with our own uh, sources. The, uh, system that they are doing for uh, user and computer man management, we extend it with the certificate generation. Certificate generation is two more important things, person who is responsible for this device and department, department where is the uh, computer belonging. So, when is such a certificate generated, you can download it with the, US, uh, with the URL and with password, or when it's uh, come around the device, you can use in QR code. How is use of certificate for domain computers? is automatic distribution and automatic renewal for mobile devices and Apple and Linux computers is manual generation and web download. You can also combine different, uh, different uh, way to authenticate. For example, we have one department that belongs to headquarters in München. We cannot, from this, for this computer, we cannot generates institute certificate. So I have used mail certificate for the persons there to access uh, wireless LAN and to, uh, to get uh, access and to put it in, in uh, one VLAN. For Cisco IP phones, I'm using uh, manufacturer installed certificate because there's no security um, problem. Also, when you come with, with external, external uh, Cisco IP phone, you can, you can get network access, but you cannot do because you are not registered of the, on the Cisco call manager. What is checked? C certificate validity, certificate revocation list, entry at Microsoft ID, password at Microsoft ID, and for example, you can uh, extend it with MAC address on DNS DSCP. So, 
I will consider device ID awareness. You can extend it uh, to prevent to share certificate. Then you have to extend certificate with bio serial number for Windows computers, device serial number for Apple and Mac, Mac uh, Apple Mac and Linux computers, Apple iOS ID. But this uh, would even more extend the network access time. And we decided not to use that because everybody, every employee, uh, un signed, uh, starting in the company, signed the regulation that uh, if you are making some, some, uh, some not good things on your computer, that could be also to reason for layoff this employee. So, to implement this new system, you have to do wireless and remote access in parallel. Because if you do only wireless, an employee can use your home computer or your personal device for remote access, then again, security is not guaranteed. And we introduce immediately these two ranges of network access. Naturally, when you have that in a functioning, then the third area, local network access, could be solved the same way. But this third area, if you are not enough prepared, you can really create a mess in the, in the institute. So here is the, here is the wireless LAN at Fraunhofer ID. There is a standard wireless controller switches, access point. These components we are using for network access to high available radio server, to uh, functioning active-active as a cluster active-active, to Microsoft Active Directory and Microsoft uh, Certificate Authority. The same components are using, same components are using for remote access, using any connect secure mobility. Any connect, why secure, any connect secure mobility? Because this, uh, this is possible to use it for two factor authentication using certificate and or, and the user and password. It is supported for EAP TLS, and it support broad, broad client support, Windows, Apple, Mac, Android, and Linux. So we, have, we had to use this, this, all these this, uh, kind of mobile devices are spread over the institute, and you have to make solution for all of them. So, this is, um, so is uh, the two-factor authentication, for example, for remote access. You are asked connect to the, to the VPN IGD Fraunhofer DE. You are asked, can I use your, this certificate for this access? That, that's the second question is, Type your username and password. You are warning that you are accessing secure environment. And finally, you are connected. As a, at the moment, security methods in use are certificate plus username and password, AAP chaining. EAP TLS, EAP TLS machine certificate for really close user group. 
we are using VPA2 enterprise authentication and open authentication with captive portal for guest access. So identifying machine and the user sometimes is the chaining is not available. As a matter of fact, is chaining available only for, for, for uh, Windows, uh, Windows equipment? What about iOS and Android-based mobile devices? You can have ch to chain together 802.1x with centralized web authentication. So you are validate device with machine certificate and will validate user using username and password. So the extension of and automating some processes, you can use infrastructure for dynamic classification of every device. Using probes like RADIUS, DHCP, HTTP, NetFlow, NMAP, SNMP, you can uh, you can divide an assigned device to different device identity group and apply policies to these uh, device identity groups and the result is uh, assigning the particular VLAN to this uh, device. You can do also posture compliance as a compliance check from uh, operating system, so analysis of antivirus, anti-spyware, firewall patches, uh, computer is landing in the so known quarantine, quarantine VLAN where you can uh, uh, activate remediation services, you can install your patches, your uh, virus checking software and so on. So, it is important, most important thing is monitoring and we are using different uh, public domain and corporate uh, system to pinpoint uh, to find uh, when you are getting from third your uh, Somebody's, somebody's, uh, uh, somebody's producing, uh, producing uh, problems. So troubleshooting, we are using network monitoring tool, in especially for wireless, Ercheck G2, XT Spectrum, OmniPeak Wireshark, and Ekahau Site Survey. And I'm coming to my summary. We did a complex solution. We have to do device configuration on the switch, on firewall and wireless controller. We have to do configuration on the radio server, configuring authentication policies, generating authorization policies, profiling policies, posture policies. We can also do policy. You can do also your policies for your own your policies. So in short, because I am over my time, I will say 8.201X is already ready for productive use. Device certificate is used to determine whether the device is a corporate or private device that is connected to a line, wireless LAN and VPN. User credential follows as a second step. And this, is, this solution for network access increase security and can use operating cost. And specifically, you are able to react promptly or to any wish. As a network guy, you are always, always guilty. And you have very, very quickly, you have to recover network problems or pinpoint that the problems are somewhere in somewhere on the server or the client. You have you can be efficient in network troubleshooting, ready to produce any report you are asked for, and easy and continuously monitor your network. 
And oft, we can prove it's not the network. And after the, the issue is still there, we can still not, it is still not the network. If oft the, the, the case, that is one, uh, one company there that is uh, selling in Germany network uh, measurement in, and monitoring uh, components are uh, giving this uh, gadget that you can drink your coffee because you pinpoint that is not the network, that is something else. And I want, at the end, thank to CVNP and this spirit on this conference, and especially for Tom Carpenter, David Coleman, Keith Persons, Peter McKenzie, and Jerome Henry, Sorry, it's Jerome Henry is not here. He was on three conferences here. The ideas brought me the courage to realize such a complex solution. And I am on that. Thank you. And I am available to the question. Thank you, Jaromir. Thank you very much. Um, any questions to Jaromir? Yes, sir. What? Are? Any pushback from users for the two-way? Uh, yeah, this this transition, this transition was done without net had had to be done without network downtime and without user uh, frustration. So we did, did, it's better to take, extend the time, how to introduce it, but to take into account these two components. No downtime and no user frustration. And we did it that way. Yes, sir. Pardon? the biggest challenge faced in the implementation. You have, you know, you have, you have a s institute management, you have security officers, you have your users, and uh, um, the things that are some, everybody from them putting on you, sometimes a uh, total, uh, taking opposite directions. So you have to, uh, you have to, you want to uh, fulfill the wishes of all of them. Sometimes technically that is possible, but uh, uh, in practically that are, are not Mm, it's better not to solve it, all the things. Especially the security officer now in Germany, they are putting on you uh, a huge number of uh, points that you have to fulfill. <laughs> 